But I was going to say, I once, I, I, I once had a girl break up with me because of my obsession with Linkin Park. That's fair, actually. No, no, but, but, but in the end, it, oh. it doesn't even matter. Oh, wait, wait, is there, is, there, is there like a twist there? Yeah, in, in the end, it doesn't even matter. Why? Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the newest comic duo, Davis, a dabbler in many disciplines with a voice that can soothe and persuade. Mike, a fanatical specialist with a mouth like a bullhorn, fueled by strong opinions and a compulsion to share them with microphones and comics in hand. They are Jacks of Trades. Hey everybody, I'm Mike. And I'm Davis. And this is Jacks of Trades. On Jacks of Trades, we read, rate, and review trade paperbacks and graphic novels from major and indie comic publishers. We're not experts, we just love hanging out and talking about comics. How are you, Davis? Pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah. Pretty good? Mm-hmm. Why, why so apprehensive? Uh, nope, just uh, practicing my dramatic pauses. As always, we're here with Greg from In-Depth Media, and we have a special guest today, our friend Richard. Say hi, Richard. Hey, guys. How's it going? Yo. Thank you for coming on. Um, Richard works at me. our favorite local comic shop. Mm-hmm. So we well, f- uh, yeah, let's go favorite. Yeah. Oh, come on. What, what, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Don't play with that. I, I, I have a sticker on the back. <laughs> it's, I will, it's, it's all this thing it's used for. It's, it's just it's, comic book notes. Th- it's all they're, I the one, they're the one. They're the shop that gets most of my money. Mm-hmm. So I will say that. I mean, where else are you going to go? Oak Street? Yeah. <laughs> I like Aww. it. I only like it because it feels like the dirty, dingy comic book shops that I used to go to. To where it's like, oh man, dude, that's a 1973 Darth Vader limited edition action figure. The one where it has the green lightsaber built in his hand instead of the red one. That worth so much money. Ah, oh, good thing it's still in the package and worth on the wall. That's just covered in dust right now, and everything's <laughs> faded, kind of, and the plastic right. has turned yellow because it's that old. I mean, that's fair, actually. I used to shop at More Fun when I like, lived closer to More Fun. Exactly. So it was really just like a, it was really just like a logistics issue. It's like, I don't want to go to Fred Street. <laughs> so, you know. See, I, I love the, the Calhoun location just because I'm the kind of person who will like read a review. And they're like, yeah, this arc's been great. This issue's a 9 out of 10. And I'm like, shit, now I got to get the singles. And I can go, and chances are you have the singles for the last three arcs mm-hmm. on the wall. Like I, I, right? I know for a lot of comic shops that logistically is very hard to to do is just have that kind of backstock. But there's always like you know at least six months, maybe even a year of any book you want to read. So if you didn't want to go trade, you wanted to go single issue just for your collection aspect, mm-hmm. you can. Right. And that's what really like I fell in love because I would go to other shops in the city, and I'd have you know. I go there on Thursday, and they're like, yeah, we're out of that one. So it came out yesterday. They were like, yeah, we only get it on subscription basis. It's like, well, what if I just want to like pick something off the wall? We don't do that. I was like, well, how do you get new customers? Like, I don't understand right. how, how you get people to build you know, their, their, their interest in your store without some kind of supply. Oh, and also charging $15 for the hip-hop variants. That's, oh. mm-hmm. People do that? Yeah, oh, yeah. The one of the one of the shops in town, it was like, oh, yeah, I know the Squirrel Girl um, uh, variant. Yeah, 30 bucks. It's like, oh, man, <laughs> so hip-hop <clears throat> variant. So Marvel, for the past uh, couple of, you know, redoing of issues, number one, they've been getting uh, people to redo the covers of like a special variant cover to be the cover of certain um, uh, classic hip hop, rap and R&B albums. Uh, for instance, the Inhumans or Uncanny Inhumans, number one is the Equimini album redid. Um, uh, I have one. I have all the Tyler the Creator variants, in which it's just Rocket Raccoon, and it says Rocket on top, and then one Squirrel Girl looking off in the distance like this, and the little squirrel like that for the other Tyler album. Oh, dude, it's yeah. Uh, L- Rocket, and LL Cool J. Yeah, Ro- Rocket is the 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 Goblin. Mm-hmm. I think Rocket might be my favorite. Yeah, that yeah. one's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, they have nine Run the Jewels. Yeah, they at this point, so I'm pretty many. sure. Oh yeah, they have a lot Ooh. of. Them. They have one, it's yeah. Doctor Strange, but instead of the chronic, it says the mystic. <laughs> yeah. oh, dude, that's, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of fun yeah. ones. But at a certain point, you're like, I'm spending a lot of money to right. not do anything with these. Oh, I, I bought like yeah. four or five, and I'm like, okay, I think I'm done now. I have like half a short box full of like <laughs> variant covers now. <laughs> like, this is cool looking. Yeah, it's like, well, it's like I could be reading, oh, well, I could just be spending my money reading like, you know, however many other series, which is weird that I buy. Well, 
I just I just like collecting them still, even though I work there. Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. I mean, like I read way more than I end up buying, but still, it's like mm-hmm. the variant covers. It's like I need this I have, one. but I need this one. Right. Well, it's like I saw the um they did um Star or the second Star Lord hip hop variant. They did a uh, Kid Cudi uh, Man in the Moon. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, well, I obviously need this. Like, what am I supposed to do? Not buy a Kid mm-hmm. Cudi's Star Lord <laughs> cover? That worked out though, because um uh, that uh that's that's like probably, that's probably the best Star Lord series. I mean, again, like a low bar there, but probably the best yeah. Star Lord series. <laughs> it's real, real low bar. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not even that um it's and it's not even that other Star Wars series were like specifically bad. It's just there's none of them. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So let's let's jump into the book now before we chat too much. Okay. Uh, today we are doing Batgirl Beyond Burnside. Batgirl. He's gonna keep doing this if you let him. Throw something at you. I really just want to see how long I could do it. I really, it was, it was nothing for. It was not really even for me. That was that was admirable. I was, I was I'm impressed. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, back to the book. Mm-hmm. Batgirl. Yes, Beyond Burnside. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is DC. It's part of their uh, rebirth relaunch that happened 2016, right? Yeah, mid-2016. Uh, yeah. Um, basically, they had done this experiment for a couple years with New 52 of trying to make comics more accessible to new readers, and a lot of people didn't like it. The old readers ran away, and the new readers didn't care. So with this one, they decided to kind of come back to their roots. Um, but you had an interesting point, Richard, about the rebirth of this, which Barb is not really coming back to her roots. It's kind of al- almost uh, continuing the New 52 continuity with the same, I guess, uh, spirit yeah. as pre-New 52. Well, the interesting thing about uh, the Batgirl rebirth is, like you said, it's continuing on from her, like like the back half of her um, New 52 status quo. But the interesting thing was that she kind of had like a soft relaunch like halfway through the New 52, which is, um, well, because the title of this um, first arc is Beyond Burnside, and the, t- the first arc of that soft relaunch was Batgirl Burnside. So it's kind of like establishing like what she was going to do. But um, it's interesting because it was kind of recontextualizing her whole thing as like this grad student, like the hip part of Gotham. Yeah, it's like it's like the Brooklyn of right. Gotham. Yeah, it's like the Brooklyn yeah. of Gotham. It's like you know, there's there's a lot of like the hipstery kind of. <laughs> there's a lot of bodegas. Yeah, everyone has everyone has a tech startup. Yeah, yeah. The, right. the super villains are are all either like uh, like based on riffraff or anime villains. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, you'd actually, you, Davis, you'd actually really probably really love it. Like that. Yeah, that sounds that sounds crazy. I might yeah. have to check that out. But it's interesting actually because um. Kind of the last year or so of the New 52 was another kind of soft rebranding called the DCU. As in, like, you, like, Y-O-U. Yeah, yeah. And part of the impetus for doing that was the success of Batgirl Burnside as a relaunch. So it kind of gave rise to something called Batgirling, which is okay. where you, like, take a, a classic character and kind of, like, just re like do something weird with them. So, like, Superman lost all his powers, became more like a street baller, like, social justice kind of type. Um... Green Arrow became a werewolf. What? Um, yeah, okay. they, they, tr- they tried to turn Aquaman into Jason Momoa. Didn't work out. Um, but it's now allowed Jason Momoa to, to exist. Yeah, it's allowed. Aquaman. Well, no, it's, Jason Momoa had already been cast, but um, uh-huh. Batman vs. Superman hadn't come out yet. Oh, okay. Still didn't work. Well, they like, gave him this weird armor and did away. The writer quit because he just like was going to get played from Aquaman fans. Yeah. Which I didn't. I, I wouldn't imagine it was like, a huge contingent, but I guess it's enough to make you quit a comic. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, so yeah, so this whole Batgirling thing showed up, and they kind of like did that across the whole line. And it's weird because a lot of my favorite New Fifty Two series were from that last year, because that's when like doing something interesting. Yeah, and, they're doing and something interesting, trying stuff. It's what they should have done at the beginning of the New Fifty Two. Yeah, but mm-hmm. again, like for a lot of people, it went too, too weird, much. Yeah. too much. Yeah, which. And then, like, considering the time frame between DCU and when Rebirth comes out and, like, how far ahead in time they plan these comics, honestly, it was just kind of, like, to let writers do whatever they want before Rebirth happen. And they were like, okay, we're just going to double down on the classics, though. Yeah, at that point, they were like, we already got this plan. Let's, yeah. just, let's just fill in some time, have yeah. some fun, guys, yeah. do whatever. Let's just give Superman a kid and let's just figure it out from there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, um, so Batgirl's kind of the more – she was – yeah, she's got kind of like not really like even like a central like storytelling mm-hmm. or like a narrative aspect in that relaunch, but like thematically, she like set the tone for like that whole last year. 
Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's DC. Uh, this trade came out in 2017. It's an ongoing, currently out right now. Um, these issues, July 2016 to December 2016. Uh, we have our creators, uh, writers Hope Larson, known for uh, Mercury, Chiggers, and a lot of awards, including an Eisner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. the, actually, pretty much everybody on the creative staff has either had a nomination or a an actual Eisner win uh artist uh raphael i'm going albuquerque yeah. I, I actually i i that's how it's spelled i looked at i looked at the video least, on youtube to like uh-huh. figure out the right pronunciation and it is albuquerque okay yeah, yeah. Cause it's spelled just like the city yeah. Yeah. um yeah he's known for uh blue beetle 24 7 also multiple awards and then our colorist uh dave mccraig uh he's done pretty much work for everything he worked on final crisis he worked on annihilation mm-hmm. Nearly every major DC Marvel character at some point mm-hmm. in his career. So we have a really, really good team mm-hmm. on a book that I would think you'd, I don't know, maybe put somebody younger or newer or something mm-hmm. like that, as opposed to, like, I, I'd imagine these guys on a classic character mm-hmm. to to give them that strength. Mm-hmm. But no, they've been allowed to, to work on Batgirl, which is, mm-hmm. is really interesting. Mm-hmm. And it definitely does show. Issue one, jump right in. Uh, I dubbed this issue Big in Japan, uh, just for the fun of it. I don't know what the actual name of the issue is, but uh, Barbara is taking this uh, Japanese vacation uh, from her home in Burnside, which is her Gotham, uh, but it's more like, I guess, Brooklyn, like we said earlier, this hipstery kind of neighborhood. They probably have cronuts. Yeah. It's probably uh, like, Burnside's kind of a back girl what Bloodhaven is in Nightwing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it, it's mm-hmm. nice that the... The Bat family has kind of diversified out and mm-hmm. has their own little regions. Right. Is Bat might in like their version of Queens or? No. <laughs> okay. He's in like some kind of nightmare cartoon version of Gotham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is uh, currently running Gordon Clean Energy, mm-hmm. which I don't have any frame of reference on. It's kind of like she like kind of have like a tech startup thing. Okay. Um, I think. If I remember, she's still in. She's still like at. She's like at the end of grad school or just out of grad school in this volume. But she was doing her graduate studies in like the previous Batgirl run. Okay, yeah, yeah. and she makes right. references to to a lot of apps. She's mm-hmm. very smart. She's always been a genius in in the DC universe. Mm-hmm. So, I guess this is their kind of you know use of that that uh, that mental ability. Mm-hmm. Also, besides having this clean energy company, mm-hmm. uh, she can also walk again, which. For anybody that listened to our Killing Joke episode, yeah, some stuff has happened. I mean, you know, it, it might mm-hmm. not aging thirty years, begin the ability to walk. That's always a nice thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but didn't she uh, in New Fifty Two? She went to physical therapy, right, and, and kind of regained her ability to walk and was mm-hmm. pulled out of that Oracle position back mm-hmm. into the Batgirl character. It was kind of a weird case because um, even with the New Fifty Two and the reset continuity, there's like a five year gap where like. Basically, anything that they needed to bring into continuity kind of on the fly, they had, like, that five-year gap. Be like, okay, yeah, so this thing happened. No, but no. Um, basically, in, the in like, the previous continuity, she had lost her ability to walk because she was, like, permanently paraplegic. Mm-hmm. And she just stayed paraplegic, even though she had access to, like, um, Amazonian healing technology or whatever. Yeah, but so, she was I was like, I was, you I was know like, what? Have... She's like, that's not fair to other people. Like, you know, if not everyone can get that, I should not get that. So, yeah, and she was, like, in, Seems like, the real like world. Yeah, okay. and, like, in the real world, she was, like, a big, like, you know, um, symbol of, like, you know, for, like, paraplegic, like, comic book fans or, like, superhero fans. Mm. But, yeah, um, it was, like, a, it was like a mm. early, you know, case for diversification of the right. character. It's not mm. just a strong, able-bodied white person. Yeah, yeah. But, um, and then in the New 52, they made, they, it was weird because, like, for a, for a while, they were kind of, like, DC editorial and like a lot of interviewers kind of like wishy washy whether or not the Killing Joke had happened. Yeah, because it's it's not yeah. technically in continuity, but mm-hmm. they started using pieces mm-hmm. of it yeah. in continuity. And like especially like depending on how you interpret the ending, it can't possibly be in continuity. Yeah, but um, yeah. So basically, they just had it where she was shot and she she did lose her legs, but physical like you said, physical therapy. She's walking again, which is interesting because then they had because then the the Burnside um, arc team introduced Frankie, mm-hmm. who's paraplegic and she was kind of set up to be the new oracle yeah which, which she kind of she's the operator is right and, and, and she plays we'll see her in i think issue three she actually this. i think she shows she shows, she shows up in this first one i think like on like a phone conversation yeah yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they're talking on the phone but like you mm-hmm. physically see her mm-hmm. and for a second i was like that's kind of fucked up mm-hmm. it's like okay so look we want barbara mm-hmm. we want her back as batgirl mm-hmm. but we really need someone in a wheelchair <laughs> 
It, so, <clears throat> like, it, it was almost like, what the it, fuck? Like, you just created this character to fill, like, the empty wheelchair? I feel like it's the same problem that um, the Earth 2 series ran into with um, Alan Scott. Because mm-hmm. in the old continuity, he had um, his son Obsidian was gay, and he's like, one of, like, the, I mean, there's, like, more gay superheroes than there used to be, or just more key, queer superheroes in general. But um, because they de-aged Alan Scott so he didn't have kids anymore, they, like, there was, like, no way to get yeah, it back in. Yeah, they had to get rid of the solution, I was like, okay, we'll just make Alan Scott gay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Which the weird thing that in story it's not really touched upon, other than like he um, has a he has like a, fia- a male fiance and he has like, a husband. Mm-hmm. In like real life, it was weird because especially like for a while, I was gonna like, like, oh, you know, Green Lantern's gay now. It's like, yeah, one of them is. One of them. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's like several. There's like several thousand. But yeah, okay. Yeah. There's a core if you're not familiar. <laughs> right. They're like they're kind of space cops. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Batgirl is in uh, Japan. She's going to meet a old Japanese superhero named Fruit Bat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, like, from the 30s, right. masked hero, mm-hmm. kind of very similar to what she's doing. So it's right. it's, it's, it's an inspiration uh, kind of thing. Uh, she's she, 104 years old. Yeah. And as far as I know, I think old. she's an original creation for this arc. But okay. there may be an issue somewhere way, way, way back. Where they Who had knows? Yeah. I mean, like, especially with Batman comics, they're always pulling out some kind of weird shit. There's, there's some, like, odd reference. But, yeah, as far as I know, she's an original it's character that's, like, this. supposed to be in kind of the Justice Society sort of mm-hmm. era. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she gets to her hostel, and she finds out her roommate is Kai, who's mm-hmm. an old friend slash love interest, I guess. They don't really delve into the past yeah. too much, but it seems like there's some kind of, you know, romantic yeah. tension between them. I think how it works out is that... He is a he's a love interest in this arc when they meet up, but I don't think he was a love interest when they were kids. Okay, so just, I think so I just think, familiar, yeah, because like an old friend, right? Because she knew him when um they were both living in Chicago. Okay, but she moved to Gotham when she was like early teens, mm-hmm. mid teens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, uh, surprise! Like it wasn't intentional. Mm-hmm. He didn't. They just happened to to meet each other serendipitously. Mm-hmm. So uh, they're gonna catch up. They go out. They eat. They drink um, craft beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they, the, they, they, right. well, well, like, <laughs> like they eat they eat this traditional Japanese food that Kai can't stand, and then they go to a Japanese Irish pub. Yes, where and she she gets, she gets some a passion fruit ale. Yeah, and he gets a, a darker beer. So basically, me and Davis <laughs> at the bar. Right, right. <laughs> me, me with the passion fruit, and Davis with the real beer, like like an actual, you know, solid cultured human. <laughs> hey, hey, passion fruits culture. And te- all beer technically cultured? Hey-oh! Oh. Oh. Oh, man. So, they... <laughs> well, well, the, the, that was great. The part, the part I liked about this was there's a lot of, like, fun little playful interactions. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, it's it's mm-hmm. not... It's a moment... You know, the, the opening of the book is mm-hmm. not costumed for the most part. Mm-hmm. It's, hey, here's the human side. Here's mm-hmm. some fun little interaction. Like, mm-hmm. you could see yourself on mm-hmm. vacation with mm-hmm. your friend having, like, this little catch-up moment. Yeah. Which is really cool because it immediately grounds it in a reality, which is kind of nice. Um, so they go out eating, drinking, having some fun. Kai gets a little food poisoning, but uh, you know, no big deal. He, he's oh, back well, on his know, feet he, shortly. That, that happens when you eat raw seafood at times. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's back on his feet. So they go out to this local festival to meet Fruit Bat. Out of nowhere, this schoolgirl in face paint just <laughs> jumps out and starts attacking pretty much what looks to be Kai exclusively. Mm-hmm. Right. As far as I'm aware, this is a brand new creation. I don't know yeah. if there are any, like, or, or maybe if it, there's, like, a some secret gang from 30 years ago that is inspiring this. Yeah. I don't know. I, there's there's always the possibility it's a secret gang from, like, 30, 40 years ago. But in this case, I think all the villains in this arc are original. Yeah. It, Though I do appreciate that Schoolgirl is a schoolgirl whose supervillain name is Schoolgirl. Yeah, like, <laughs> this, this, there's not... <laughs> Like there's a there's a simplicity there that I appreciate. Yeah, it, it's it's real nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Batgirl engages. Uh, we see the costume, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, that classic purple and yellow. Yeah, I was about to say. I'm like, I'm really glad they stuck with the you know classic. It's like, why is, is she supposed to blend in the night? Why is she still wearing bright yellow and purple? Mm-hmm. Uh, Batman's of the night. This is more of dusk yeah. time. Well, I, I don't know if I mentioned this before on the podcast. If I have, forgive me, but I was telling Davis at least personally. Um, there's a there's a a part in the current Nightwing mm-hmm. where Nightwing is talking about how he had to learn to look out for himself. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, I'm a young, immature, weak boy in the gaudiest colors out with the 
biggest target in all of Gotham City who's wearing entirely black. Mm -hmm. I'm really easy to see and a great leverage point. Mm -hmm. I had to learn to look out for myself as well as have Batman look mm -hmm. out for me. <laughs> so it's kind of odd. We're like, yeah, Batman's, yeah. Batman's the knight. He dresses all black. And all of his compatriots are the most gaudy like characters with their color schemes. Well, it's because they're the boy wonder. Yeah. Poor, hey. poor, poor Robin. But... I, I like how the purple pops, the, the yellow pops. Like, it's not, let's make it a dark, you know, character because yeah. it's Batman and Batman begets Batgirl, so she has to yeah. be dark too. No, no, they're, they're like, no, it's going to be bright. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I really liked all the color work in this um in this one. It's it's because you bring up, it's like the purple and yellows in the costume, but it's also largely like yellow oranges and like blue purples like throughout the whole yeah. run, which like. Well, I, I actually have a lot of notes about the the colors. Right. Too. Yeah. Just because okay. just it's, it's such an important part to the story. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do like the the costume is very real. Like mm -hmm. it's it's like a motorcycle jacket, mm -hmm. some combat boots, um, and the mask is almost like a helmet with these really large eye holes. Mm -hmm. So it's not the white eye slit. Mm -hmm. You actually get to see her eye, right? Which is which is really cool. Mm -hmm. it engages the schoolgirl. Uh, assailant flees. Then we get this first view of Barbara's mind, mm -hmm. where she like kind of pulls out for a second and kind of maps out her plan of attack. Sees real quick. Before she gets to execute it, fruit bats out of her wheelchair, full costume, just kicking the crap just out of schoolgirl. While she's escaping, grabs her by the ankle and throws her to the ground yeah, while 140. she's just driving away. So schoolgirl throws a knife at her and she blocks it with her hand. Like just, just a hand block. I was like, what the? Okay. And of course, that's Barbara's reaction. Like, what the hell? This 104-year-old woman just blocks yeah. a throwing knife with her hand. Mm -hmm. As you do. Yeah. Uh, so schoolgirl runs away at that point, which Barbara runs over, kind of gets a little bit of, of an interaction with, mm -hmm. with fruit bat who immediately starts clutching a chest, mm -hmm. you know, 204. I feel like it's a little stressful in this kind of situation. I'd, I'd imagine, um, mm -hmm. find, find that, that, that spot on the page where uh, fruit bat gives Barbara her instructions. Do I have to impersonate a 104-year-old woman? Yes. Yes. All yes. Right. <laughs> but, do, but don't make it culturally insensitive. I wasn't planning on it until you said it, but okay. <laughs> don't, don't pull an iron fist. You can't see the future when the past is standing in your way. You must go find teacher. Yeah, Batgirl has no idea what the hell that means. Right. But... I don't know what the um, hell that means. Everybody's kind of now looking at the old woman clutching her chest and the vigilante standing over her. Mm -hmm. Never a good look. So mm -hmm. she books it. Mm -hmm. uh, but as she's booking it, kind of thinking about what she said, she sees a billboard for this Singaporean MMA promotion. Mm -hmm. It's booking itself as the future mm -hmm. of MMA. So she goes, okay, future. Let's let's go do this. Mm -hmm. Bit of, oh. bit, of, bit of free association there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, see, 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 I mean, it's comic books, so in my head, I'm like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. But if I was in the real world and that's what I saw next, I'd be like, okay, would never even cl click. Right. No, no not at me. all. I, sir, you, but, look, you look up for signs everywhere. But it's a comic book, and yeah. the artist didn't draw it for nothing, right. so. We only got 20 pages. You got to, like, there's yeah. a conservation of detail involved. Yeah, every, every, every page is pretty much essential. Yeah. So, yeah, she resigns herself that she's going to go uh, check out the Singaporean mm -hmm. MMA promotion. Mm -hmm. Okay, we jump to issue two. She's in Singapore. Yeah. Uh, we assume she flew there in an airplane. Yeah. Well, she, I mean, she flies there on airplanes and all of them. Like, it, there's no there's, bat plane. There's no, you know, yeah, bat she, submarine. And this, she, she's flying, you know, coach and or for, cl first yeah. class occasionally because she's owns a tech company, yeah, so I imagine she can afford a decent plane yeah, ticket. she's like traveling as Barbara Gordon. Well, yeah, then yeah. she probably has a lot of frequent flyer miles saved up. Mm -hmm. She does say that. She says that she gets a nice hotel room at one point, and she says, I got a lot of miles in my pocket, so I figured I'd use them. That works for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, she, she gets there, and she immediately hits the streets, which I like that little opening, because she notices there's a drone Right, like floating outside the window, and she's like, "Okay, that must be, you know, teacher. We got to go find it." Boom, goes, gets the drone, bam, kicks open the door, and it's just some pervert who is taking pictures of her in her underwear. And and he's in his underwear as well, because you got to get in that element. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's considering the age range of the comic, they can't exactly have dick in hand. Yeah, like on the page. So as like, inter yeah, as entertaining as that would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's not the old alias comic. Like, you can't, you can't really do that much. But yeah, so uh, j just a funny little one-off moment, but I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So now she's, she's kind of searching her photographic memory mm -hmm. uh, to figure out details. 
and she remembers that the schoolgirl had a tattoo on the inside of her bicep. Like a frat boy in 1999. Yep. That's a great line. It's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Davis is reading directly from the page. Exactly. It's just... I actually, I actually really love that line. Oh. So I, I've been notified by uh, Greg, our producer, uh, that my microphone is picking up uh, a brass band on the radio. So yeah, if you hear a little trumpet and trombone, that's because the universe... Sorry. Loves me <laughs> specifically more than, more than yeah. Davis and Richard here, uh, and and they're giving me a backing soundtrack for celebration, uh, or that's what I tell myself when I go to bed at night. We apologize for the entertainment. So back to the show. Highly entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, she sees this this kanji tattoo basically, mm-hmm. and goes, oh, "Okay, it means student." She mm-hmm. figures that out. Doesn't and really help is- her now, except mm-hmm. for. The reference to teacher. She mm-hmm. goes, okay, well, then maybe there's something there, but I don't have enough to go on. Because if you have no students, can you call yourself a teacher? I don't know. <laughs> no. no. Like, no, no, like, no. It, like, I mean, I'm just saying, if you have no one to teach, can you be a teacher? It's like, if you have, if you have no wood to chop, are you a lumberjack? This sounds like one of those... Like, white girl inspirational Instagrams? Real eyes, real lies, real lies. Exactly. All right. That's exactly what it sounds like. I think that's Tupac, though. Can I, can, can I give... <laughs> I want you to have a, a inspirational I mean, Facebook page that's not actually inspirational. It's just regurgitated quotes that you're misquoting. It's just you misquoting Tupac forever. <laughs> That that sounds no. like that sounds like a blast. We'll just, I, I, I'd follow we'll just that. we'll just get a bunch of of like beachscapes, mm-hmm. and then in a white script over it, Davis will just type out Tupac lyrics, <laughs> and that will be his entire inspirational <laughs> it, Facebook page. It can't be better than Kanye Wes Anderson, but that's oh god, oh it's so good. That was yeah, it's because of ZF. <laughs> so, without any other uh, leads to go on, she's gonna go check out this MMA promotion where she's immediately denied for being a girl and we get an offer to be a ring girl, mm-hmm. which uh, I love this moment as an MMA fan because mm-hmm. there is this, A, it's a, it's a subtle moment of feminism mm-hmm. in the book. So mm-hmm. if you're not here for that kind of thing, mm-hmm. you, you get a little earworm. It's right. a nice, nice little earworm to go on without being too oppressive. Mm-hmm. You know? um, yeah, not like champions. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. man. That, that, was, that, was our, that was our last drinking issues arc. Right. And it's just it's just beating I, you over the I head with with, yeah. with what they're doing. I wanted to like champions. Yeah, we did too. I, I didn't. We, we, we were really excited for it. <laughs> well, like, and like, then it became yeah. a chore, and we just got violently drunk like, every like, time we had to read an issue. I like Mark Wade, and I like Humberto Ramos. I don't like them doing trying to do that kind of book. Yeah, no. yeah. 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 Which yeah, no, you're right. Um, Batgirl definitely. Well, especially because like Hope Larson's kind of got a, a background like that sort of YA, um, like graphic novel. Yeah. Realm and this as far as why a young adult for anyone who doesn't know right and this is like her first kind of mainstream superhero work so she's better like kind of working like it's because like with young adult like there's only so much you can say yeah there's some subtlety (laughs) yeah there's some nuance it's it's not it's not just backhanding you with the point every time because like the YA audience is kind of weird because like they're not it's not children's literature anymore but it can't really be. Adult, as adult yeah. literature as like a lot of adult re- literature is or even like how a lot of the superhero comics are mm-hmm. so she definitely gets in like well I, I imagine I, I remember me as a teenager mm-hmm. you know and, and like late teens mm-hmm. thinking so highly of myself mm-hmm. you know because I had started learning some things in school and you're like mm-hmm. oh I know so much about the world so when you read a book and you notice this little like subtle detail mm-hmm. you're like ooh look how insightful I am I'm so smart <laughs> and, and woke and <laughs> I'm so woke. <laughs> just, I, which, I, do, I do that to this day. What are you talking about? Yeah. I mean, I, I still do, but but there, there's a level of like, life is like, calm down. You're not that cool. Right. Like, li- life is really kind of evened out my oh, yeah. understanding. Uh, but th- there's actually, you know, in, in the MMA community, there's a really cool uh, conversation about this. Like, Joe Rogan, who's the UFC's commentator, you know, he's a fight commentator. He is an athlete in combat sports. Very knowledgeable, very i spoken, you know, every time they mention a female fight, he always goes out of his way to be like, yeah, why can't we get like, you know, just some strapping young boy, you know, in little shorts walking around for the girls fights. Like yeah. why, why is there a ring girl for the men's fights and a ring girl for the women's fights? Like 
Screw it. Just get some hot dude in some little short shorts. Yeah. Give him a number and get, let him walk around. Get some beefcake. You know, like, let's, let's, a Chris e- Hemsworth type. Equal opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I would love to see a Hemsworth being a ring being a ring boy. That'd that could be, be wonderful. That, that could be an entire movie right there. Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> as a, as a ring just, girl. just, just fighting, fighting <laughs> yeah. against the the cultural. Yeah. You know. We can just leanings. call it tragic, Mike. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. So. But she le- she leaves the promotion. Uh, she runs into uh, May Hao. Mm-hmm. H-A-O. I'm going Hao on that mm-hmm. one. I think that's how the Singaporeans pronounce that. I tried yeah. looking it up. There's mm-hmm. there's some definitive you know pronunciations that I found for this issue. Some of them I'm kind of flying by the right. seat of my pants. But uh, May runs an MMA gym, and she's trying to establish women's MMA in Singapore from the bottom up. So she offers to train Barbara to fight Singapore's previous biggest MMA star who is recently signed with a Korean promotion because the Singaporean MMA promotion wasn't really focusing on their female fighters. Mm. So Barbara's going to train. Um, she gets back to the hotel and Kai's got this, this date planned, mm-hmm. which kind of catches her off guard. I should bring your bathing suit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, if anybody's familiar, there's, there's that, that hotel in Singapore. It's the, the three columns with the beam across it, it looks almost like a piece of Stonehenge, mm-hmm. and then it is a big pool overhanging. It's like a, it's like a, like an iconic you know piece of architecture. Mm-hmm. If anybody's familiar with it, he has managed to get a key to the rooftop pool. They go up there. They have this nice little romantic entanglement. Uh, but Barbara's really worried about Kai because she's like, "Well, I like saving people, so am I just trying to save him, and that's why he's attracted to me in this moment?" You know, like, like what, what, what is the, the underlying thing here? Because I, I guess she's trying to struggle with the concept of not having previously had these feelings for him, mm-hmm. you know? So he's willing to, like, hang out and kind of put on hold, but she's, you know, she's entertaining it. She's right. kind of not 100% about it. So we get this little back and forth of her training and then him trying to win her over her training him trying to win her over her training him trying to win her over and then at the end of the week kai's got to go she stays for the fight so i just want to point out one thing real quick um uh uh-huh. so right right when they meet fruit bat he says ah hi i don't speak japanese and then he's talking to his grandfather clearly in japanese a couple of pages later in the next <laughs> issue I think he makes a point about that, though. I mean, it's, 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 I, uh, I don't know if he brings, if he did, I didn't pay attention to it, but this guy seems Entirely sketchy. Possible. This guy seems a little sketchy. S- says the man that's right. read the end of this book. I'm just saying, he's a sketchy guy. Yeah, it's like, well, know, yeah, well, okay. Foreshadowing. Uh, considering he was staying at a hostel and now he's staying at a hotel in Singapore on her dime, hmm. where did he get this pass to the, probably the most expensive spot in Singapore? Mm-hmm. Suspicion. Yeah, exactly. You know, so you're like, where did you get this nonsense from? Yeah. But um, yeah, so it's the end of the week. She's got to take the fight. He's gone. So the night comes. Fight. Yes. Her opposing fighter is the Moth. Mm-hmm. I don't think that. Did they mention her real name, Davis? Can you find it uh, on the page? I don't. Th- uh, they might, but I just wrote her down as the Moth because I didn't want to keep butchering these pronunciations. Nope. I don't see anything aside from the Moth. Anyway, she mm-hmm. looks real tough. Mm-hmm. She looks real tough. I do want to make a note. Uh, the most unbelievable part about this issue is that you could fight the biggest female fighter in Singapore after a week of training. Right. That, that like, nobody's giving. Well, I mean, an American an MMA fight mm-hmm. with the biggest fighter in her gender mm-hmm. in that region after a week. That part kind of bothered me. A little. I'm just saying though, the, I, it drives the, the story. But it's like maybe if it was like a in the gym sparring match, yeah. like you know, a la the first half of Warrior. Yeah, it would make more sense. But whatever. Hey, I mean, well, they're trying to build it up. Maybe there's not a lot of competitors. Just taking all comers, you know. What well, kind of um? Let me think about that. We talked about this a little before um, the whole Iron Fist thing. Mm-hmm. It's kind of an interesting spin on that because like she shows up and she's like this white American and, you know, just traveling all over Asia. And, like, she's 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 Batgirl. Like, she's trained with, like, 
Bruce yeah. Wayne. Like she's a she's a good fighter. Yeah. But these are like people like you know yeah, but, fight for but a she, living. Yeah, but yeah. she's not familiar with this rule right. set per se. Yeah. You know. So it's kind of it's kind of ni- nice though because she shows up and she's not like immediately better than everyone else. Yeah. Like even after a week of training, yeah. it's not like she's gonna right. beat the best MMA it's, fighter it's in not, Singapore. It's not like Stephanie Kane right. shows up with her assassin train. <laughs> Assassin. <laughs> there's, like, there's like it's like a needle in in right. one of the knuckles of her gloves that has a nerve toxin or something. Yeah. No. Uh, so yeah, the the fight ensues and Barbara's outclassed. Mm-hmm. It's very clear that as Batgirl with tools, with tactics, with strategy in this rule set, she's outclassed. KO. Why does she get KO'd, Davis? She gets KO'd by getting because she got punched in the face. Uh, but the reason why she got punched in the face, she was too distracted because she had the 1999 frat boy tattoo of the same thing on her arm. Also a student. So, boom, KO. I love the KO page. It, it, it's just as it, great. It, like, it, it looks like a scene from Street oh, yeah. Fighter. Like, it, it, it's like the Street Fighter scene where you're like, shh. It's oh, as if the KO was slow motion. It's as, as if the KO was painted with the blood that is coming out of her nose. <laughs> very, very, very. very it's a lot. It's a lot of blood on the KO. Uh-huh. That's all I'm well, saying. Well, I mean, just wow, saying. like that's a that's, that's transfusion levels. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, so, so get an O, a, an o negative up in here. <laughs> what well, a good thing is next issue she wakes up just fine. Yeah, no, she's like, um, yeah, she's totally, yeah. We'll we'll, we'll go we'll go with a flash knockout. It, it wasn't a full you know yeah, check we'll, out for yeah. a while. Oh, actually, one more thing about this. Um, mm-hmm. She uses a fake name. Yeah, yeah, she does. Yeah, she does because she doesn't want to. I guess mm-hmm. even she doesn't want to use Batgirl, obviously, but mm-hmm. she doesn't even want to use Barbara Gordon. Mm-hmm. Good old Amy Beddows. <laughs> I don't Amy know Beddows. if that's a... fact checker Greg. Yes, Amy Beddows is that a reference? Okay, so while Greg looks that up, mm-hmm. uh, Barbara wakes up, tries to figure out what issue three. Barbara yeah. wakes up. Yes. Uh, Barbara wakes up, tries to figure out what's wrong. Uh, that's when she finds out that her opponent's deaf. Mm-hmm. So the you know she she thinks the lack of distraction might have helped. Because you know, because as everybody knows, if you lose one of your senses, all your other senses get heightened. You know, like Daredevil, right? <laughs> yes, and also uh, chemicals. So when she's in yeah. prison, she uses the Barbara uses. Okay, so it's an oh. alias she's previously used. Right. Okay, well, cool. Yeah. That, that, okay. That's a nice little, well, nice little callback. Yeah, that kind of fits the whole rebirth thing with, like, bringing back in. Yeah, all kind I, of like it. I like it. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, she's thinking about her opponent being deaf. She's thinking about Fruit Bat just sitting quietly waiting to jump into action. Mm-hmm. So there's there's a certain, you know, credence to this focus that these fighters have that she doesn't. So she goes to try and remember what happened, and basically the knockout took out her short-term memory. Mm-hmm. But... Her eidetic memory, her photographic memory is still in place. So she basically has to download her memory, you know, for a second right. and kind of watches it like as an out-of-body experience, remembers the tattoo. Mm-hmm. So uh, Kai's in trouble. Yeah. Well, let's say she, she really, again, doesn't have any leads. So let's go back to the hotel and regroup. Gets there and Kai's locked in the bathroom and Moth, now costumed, mm-hmm. is ransacking the room. Um, Moth has this really cool costume. Which is like it, it, Moth actually has a costume, which is nice. Yeah. The schoolgirl didn't. She was just wearing her school uniform and face painted. <laughs> yeah, but the can... face paint denotes it. A, it's a costume, right? But Moth has like this this winged suit, almost like like a squirrel suit, and like that grifter style right. bandana mask. <laughs> yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like like, like, it, like it, it's mm-hmm. it co- it covers the mouth, but it hangs down over the neck like loose mm-hmm. loose right. fabric. But 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 the eyes you can leave. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the eyes are out. Mm-hmm. Um, so they start fighting. And Moth, being a fighter, has her combinations ingrained. So mm-hmm. she goes through that same combination that knocked out Barbara in the, in the fight. Mm-hmm. Barbara now knows it. So she punches her out a window. Yeah, that was a little aggressive. Just that just, was sort of, that was sort of, sort of aggressive. Yeah. yeah for, for a second, I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, because Barbara wouldn't know that she has a she has a flight suit. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know. I was like, "Oh shit!" But then now she's just fine. Yeah. She, yeah, she, 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 she she's kind of you know glides out the window yeah. all moth like. It's like what? Yeah. You're the bat family. Just you hanging don't out with people. Yeah, exactly. She, yeah. Just maim them yeah. perfectly. <laughs> just just really bad. You just hurt them real, <laughs> real, real, hurt them really, 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 really bad. Yeah, but but they can still live. Yeah. Yeah. Then she goes and she kicks moth out the window. Then you see moth like hanging out near a lamppost as moths do I just guess. fluttering <laughs> around the lamppost just looking at it can't hear the buzz so, you know. but yeah so so she thinks back to the distraction comment where she's like okay well 
the only reason I beat Moth this time was because I lost to her last time. Mm -hmm. You know, so am I just not meant to learn this lesson that Fruit Patch is trying to teach? And, and, and that becomes, you know, the issue. But she doesn't have time to deal with that because she got to go save Kai, who's naked in the bathroom because he was taking a shower. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, they got to get the beefcake with the shirt off. I was about to say, get, in the, beef, get in the beefcake in there. I mean, there. I, I, I kind of, I, I, I like that aspect because you got you, you have it in, in uh, Batgirl and you have it in Nightwing, mm -hmm. where they're like, okay, the most naked characters are the men. Nightwing has a history as, as being beefcakey though. That's yeah, been, like a thing for yeah. like a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, Which, just, just this show. Well, I mean, I, yeah. he has, he has the probably. One of the, at least one of the most skin tight suits. Mm -hmm. Oh, very. A, a, apart from a couple Green Lanterns, like there's not very many other men's suits where it's just like, it's just <laughs> it's just it's just a, a thin layer of, of neoprene, basically. You, you just see all it's those. Just, you just see all those bulges. Yeah, all the like, definitions. All, 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 all kinds of bulges. Man doesn't even have a full shirt. He has an X on him and just yeah. and tidy whities mm -hmm. I kind of like the X, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. which is actually just a manifestation of his. Um, his transformation powers. Right. Like he's so actually not clothed. He's actually yeah, he's actually naked all the time. Yeah. Lucky bastard. Yeah, he, right? just, he just partially transforms into what? looking like he has clothes on. What a way to live. <laughs> so <laughs> she gets Kai to the bathroom and they get into a fight because now she knows they're after Kai. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not even a mistake, you know, not even, you know, an innocent bystander mm -hmm. like with mm -hmm. the, the schoolgirl. And she has this interaction with Kai where he's like, look, I have nothing that could be stolen. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, okay. You don't say you didn't have anything. You just said you had nothing that could be stolen. Mm. So it's, I don't know, inside of you, it's knowledge, it's mm. something. She doesn't trust him, which basically causes them to part on very negative terms. Right. right. As you should. Get rid of that dead weight. Yeah. <laughs> Dump him. Mm -mm. That's a deal breaker, ladies. <laughs> That's a deal breaker. Deal breaker. Deal breaker. Deal breaker. So she heads to the airport. Um, she, found, she found a spy cam mm -hmm. in, in the hotel room that was transmitting to Seoul. Right. She's like, okay, well, maybe this lead. I mean, the drone was, but maybe this one will be. Hops on the airplane, and she runs into one of my favorite characters in the whole book. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing something about that spy cam. Don't you love that we live in the 21st century and everything is connected via USB? So it's like, oh, look, spy cam. That's a micro. Clip, clip. Done. Just click it into well, your MacBook. It's also kind of funny because a lot of like the, like the tech stuff in this arc that would you know, it's just kind of like things we have in our world today. Like, this has been like vaguely sci-fi, like even like 10, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. well, well, I mean, that that's what's really cool about reading yeah. these books now is because Batman mm -hmm. and the Bat family have mm -hmm. always been doing tech stuff like right. this. Mm -hmm. But like the concept of somebody taking a spy cam and being able to get the encrypted information off of it mm -hmm. 10 years ago was so insane. Mm -hmm. You're like, he must have this crazy billion dollar technology that right. only he has. Mm -hmm. And then you see Barbara plug the spy cam into a USB and yeah, probably yeah. like yeah. if you don't have the resources to buy an outrageously specialized piece of equipment. Yeah. You're going to have a drone that I can easily infiltrate. You're going to, as long as I'm basically familiar with whatever hardware you're using, mm -hmm. or I can Google a YouTube video on how to be basically familiar with the hardware you're using. Yeah. Like it's not, it's, yeah. it's actually believable now. Whereas before it was like, this is amazing. This right. crazy futury. It's like yeah. Star Trek. Guys. Right. Like what would have been like science fiction, science fantasy is now like just like I guess techno thriller would be the term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. techno thriller. Yeah. yeah. Hey y'all, this is Spy Guy sixty nine, and we're gonna tell you how to upload all the information off of your Dragonfly drone onto your iPhone. Let's start, but first, that, that's, how, that's how I imagine the YouTube video would uh, the go. YouTube video. Yeah, yeah. Oh. That's 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 how I thought it that's, would go. That, that's okay, that's Greg, how they always talk about. Idea. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, D Davis, talk about this character because he's definitely one of my favorites. He's very Aryan with buck teeth. One of my favorites. It's um, uh, so he just starts <laughs> I, talking about. I actually it. really like this guy too. <laughs> it, it's a fun, easy to use product called Probiotel. <laughs> it is a water soluble probiotic, and it's now a new mixed berry flavor. Mm -hmm. What else do you need to know about this guy aside from he's just you know what? Listen, you know what? This is a great product. I love this product. It's a, you know what? This product, you know what? I could have a wife and child, but you know what? You can't take my bacteria. Not at all. Those kids don't need them as long as I got me and my bacteria. Bacteria. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> this dude's Probiotic. life is so dark, this, this but guy, he's trying so hard to This guy has like the worst it. life, but I just... It, it's, he also has like the funniest lines in the entire yeah. story. But it, it's also believable because how many times do you scroll through Facebook and see your detox, skinny tea, stomach wrap... Okay. You know, post from some friend that got into this pyramid scheme. Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to get just a big contain container of biotics, 
and then I want to add some probiotics to one and some antibiotics to the other one and just see what happens. Also, if you mix antibiotics and probiotics, do you just get water and they cancel themselves out? No. <laughs> you, you don't get water, but... I mean, that that's kind is, of how medicine works. I was going to say, all right, so the probiotic and antibiotic, if you add together, does it foam up like a, like a volcano that you do? In like, no. n- probiotics are not... Antibiotics and probiotics are not the same family. Okay, what about, ooh, what about con I didn't know that. So we use <gasps> if, you, if you do have a strong enough antibiotic, though, it can take out everything. Oh, sure, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. But just like the idea that, like, there's I'm, a yeah, quid you're, pro quo the, the, is not exactly... A, cu- a couple, a, as much as Davis loves it, a couple bottles of kombucha thing, right? are not combating, like, a chemo level, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> Listen, antibiotic. You know? Yeah. Boot, like, Boots juice like and a CHB can solve antibiotic. everything. I don't know what you're talking about. That's your, that's, your, that's your miracle cure? Miracle yeah. cure. Mm-hmm. Miracle cure. Boots juice and CHB cures the da- everything. The Davis miracle cure. Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. But thankfully, <laughs> probiotic guy gives her a spark of inspiration. Mm-hmm. What if Kai has information that is encoded on a bioengineered bacteria mm-hmm. and that's what's going on it's it's in his body that's how he's transmitting it so he's transporting it i mean and and that's why everybody's out to get him but he doesn't have anything anybody could quote unquote steal so this is like all of wikipedia in one bottle of kombucha yes <laughs> okay i guess i don't know now well, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not for me it's for the listener to, to be fair that's actually i think that's pretty much what it's it is kind of kind of let's i mean broad strokes but yeah it's like <laughs> It's like information on bacteria. Yeah. And and he's anyway, smuggling it in his yeah, body because he's an idiot. This is when she calls Frankie the uh, the operator, mm-hmm. which is basically her oracle, mm-hmm. which, again, kind of fucked up. They just put a brand new character in a wheelchair to replace mm-hmm. her old position. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Well, it's not it, like they crippled her and then put her in there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, well, I mean, well, well, it's no, like, well they, yeah. they created her as a handicap per, well, differently abled, if mm-hmm. that's the, I don't even, I don't know the terms. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I say handicapable. Well, there you go. I think uh, director hate mail to Davis. Yep. <laughs> I don't think Handy Cable is PC anymore. Yeah, it. it I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if it. I, I guess it was at some point, but then actual like disabled people were like, "No, your yeah, that's, anger that's fuels me." <laughs> um. So yeah. Anyway, uh, calls her to get a little bit of information on the the job mm-hmm. that Kai's got because it was it was through a friend that mm-hmm. Kai had that she knew of. Uh, turns out he was doing some shady stuff, got fired from his last company for some uh, questionable things. Mm-hmm. So she's like, okay, I, I think I know what's going on here. She goes to the Moth's MMA gym over there mm-hmm. and that's, you know, kind of goes to check in and finds a study guide for a college entrance exam. Right. Kind of weird, mm-hmm. but I got to go find the signal. Mm-hmm. Gets to a building under construction. And gets stopped by one of the village people. Pretty much, it's a construction worker. Again, <laughs> not really a costume. No, no, no. His, his, thing with, his oh. name is Construction Man. Okay, he I thought his name was Hard Hat. I'm just kidding. It's Hard Hat, but I just <laughs> okay. want to say Construction because well, Construction Man sounds like it'd be a horrible superhero. The well, the weirdest part is that well, he does. He is, is he has the worst costume, but probably the best name of the three. Yeah, his moth is very non-indicative. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing about moth that makes her moth like. Yeah, no. Schoolgirl's just lazy. Yep. Hard hat though. They, yeah, they, they, they put a little bit of work into him. Well, hard hat. He sounds like a, like a GI Joe reject. He does. He like does I'm pretty sure there, like I'm G- pretty sure there is a GI a GI Joe character just called Hard Hat, but I'm not that deep in. How's the, GI the Joe base Lord. building going, Hard Hat? Well, it's going fine, Duke. <laughs> so someone's got someone's got to build all those bases. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of military bases. In I'm, GI I'm, Joe. I'm, <laughs> I, that just reminds me of the Venture Brothers when they have, uh, whenever they have their their reject ones. One of them's Bum Rush, oh, and that. it's a homeless guy with a shopping cart. <laughs> oh God! Oh, the all the um all the OSI people. Yeah, all the, all, the, all the OSI people. Or, yeah. or my favorite my favorite one is um uh, Shore Leave. He's I Shore Leave's, I'm Shore Leave's the best. Ah, <laughs> uh, good times, good times. <laughs> but so Barbara Gordon at E Bat Girl is now um uh, well. She conferences a hard hat guy, and he's going, and they're fighting. Fighting Sue's. And, and then what happens? Moth shows up as well. Two on one. I'm just saying that we have multiple students here mm-hmm. and one outsider trying well, to get I, I, At this point, I guess we can assume hard hat's a student. He's got no tattoo that we've seen, but mm-hmm. yeah. He's well, well it's, it's not really good to have tattoos if you're you know working, if, if you're, you know, well, having exposed flesh in some of the areas that they've seen and working in a yeah. construction, so not yeah, a good idea. Uh, 
so yeah, they, they're fighting, and this is where Barbara kind of figures out the motives. Uh, they basically, as all good villains do, tell the hero everything as they're beating them up mm-hmm. in the hopes that they will beat them up and the information will never get out. Mm-hmm. Never works that way. I don't know why they keep doing you it. You know, I, that is a little weird. I feel yeah. like there's like a, like a lack of self-awareness that's just kind of dictated by the, the need to like tell a story. Yeah, at, at a certain yeah. point, you're like, we have to get this information out mm-hmm. somehow. So mm-hmm. barring them finding a secret document, we got to have some mm-hmm. kind of exposition, but we don't want to... I guess put a hole in the well, action. Well, finding the secret document, then reading the secret document, and then having to outwardly explain the secret document. Yeah, that, that's usually and, very difficult to do. And on top of all that, con- still having to have a fight scene. Yeah, it's, it's still having it <laughs> interesting. Back, 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 yeah. So yeah, um, basically, uh, it, it's kind of a, a tale on modern higher education, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is which is cool. It's a take on that in that these characters are going to teach her because. Mm-hmm. Teacher is something that's going to help them pass their entrance exams for college. Mm-hmm. And in a newly, I guess, westernized Asia, mm-hmm. if you're not doing well and in college, you're doing mm-hmm. well in college, you're stuck basically in the old world. Like you're right. not, you're, you're, right. you know, you're kind of limited to mm-hmm. the old cultural norms. The only way to really move up in the world is through college, which kind of, you know, it's, it's to a lesser extent, but still very Western, mm-hmm. you know, Europe yeah. and, and America as well. And uh, we well, say, but, but, but the, well, the difference with that being is, is so them focusing on this, this test, the entrance exam yeah. test they talked about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's all based on, well, they talk about this later, but it's all one test. It's, it's one test but to get in. It's like, it's like, but here's, here, here's my yeah. thing. I think they're very short sighted in that. Well, yeah, you passed the test. You got a lot more years of tests to go. Like it's not. If this is the hard one for you. I got some bad news. Like right. it doesn't get better. <laughs> this is this is not going to get any, any like, easier. It gets a lot worse as time goes on. Mm-hmm. Like this could be one of those. Oh no! Once you pass the test, everything after this is easy, squeezy, lemon peasy. It's got you know wean them out. Mm-hmm. No. Nah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I I did kind of like that that commentary because mm-hmm. to an exaggerated extent. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of what's going on in the world today right because i have a disgusting amount of student loan debt oh just, same. <laughs> yeah just to go to school yeah like like, like I, I i'm not dressing up in costume and fighting batgirl but i i've done you know taking out that much debt at the age of 18 is really questionable under any other circumstances mm-hmm. like except for like nobody would ever go okay an 18 year old with very little work experience and no life experience Fifty thousand dollar car loan? Absolutely. Like, <laughs> right. No, that never happens. No. But it's totally okay in school. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm glad I went to a cheap college. Sorry, an expensive college. <laughs> I could have, I should have, I didn't. Mm. Don't regret it. But hey, it was better than for me. It was better than staying in Texas. So makes some things kind of challenging. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Uh, my my college choice is definitely motivated by to buy. You know, I really don't want to stay in Alabama. <laughs> I'm not even from Alabama. Why am I in Alabama? Why am I here? Yeah, but no. How, how quickly can I get out? I really like the uh, the education thing. That was a definitely like, one of the more interesting themes. I thought, mm-hmm. especially because I mean, I don't know if I've read that theme before. Like, right. like you, you read a lot of repeating themes and just new takes on mm-hmm. them. I don't. I haven't read that particular kind of right take on anything. Like it's the desperation not. through. Mm-hmm. I don't have a future, but because of education. Mm-hmm. Well, it's kind of like that. Uh, well, it's the. Well, well, I, I don't have an, I don't have a future. Better get involved with crime, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. Or the, uh, or the, you know, but the, like it's or, it's getting involved with crime or the, to then immediately get out of it to actually have a real future. There's actually a legitimate um, exit strategy here, bruh. As far as they think that you know, it's kind of interesting too because if you go down like the villains of this arc, mm-hmm. they're like situations get like more dire as they go. Like schoolgirl is still a schoolgirl. Yeah, like she still she still has right. some chances. Then um, moth moth like you know she could didn't be a pass successful. Her yeah, but she could be yeah exactly. Yeah, hard hat's a construction worker, so I mean that's rough, but at least he's got like you know a legitimate yeah. job. Yeah, but he's but, employed. So he's like, a upward, teacher, upward but we'll talk mobility. about teacher in a yeah. minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but but upward mobility of construct of hard hat mm. c- construction man. Mm. Like he, he can't he, he can maybe go up to manager man What's at the, one with, time with, without or project with, manager man with, at with level. without the the college experience that yellow hard hat's mm. never becoming white. Right. right. He's never upgrading, you know, past mm. a certain point. So, yeah. But you, you do make a good point about that. I didn't think about that. Is mm. is that everyone that comes in, their situation's a little worse off than the last one. Yeah. Which makes teachers, like, backstory we eventually get really interesting. Yeah. And, and you're like, okay, yeah. well, I kind of feel for you, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. no. 
Don't feel bad. Guy. I would feel for you, but not for dealing with it in this way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so she manages to escape the flight and tracks down this teacher. Mm-hmm. So we, we get the look of teacher. Mm-hmm. Teacher actually, she she has a presence about her. Right. Mm-hmm. She she's got this this white skin, mm-hmm. white hair, and these red outline tattoos, mm-hmm. almost like your henna's fading, mm-hmm. kind of thing. <laughs> She's fading, <laughs> fading henna. Yeah, yeah that's that's yeah. exactly the way um, I describe yeah. it. Absolutely. Um, she she's wearing a kipe that like tradition. Like you, you think think of a Chinese woman in a movie. That outfit, the high collar, no <sighs> sleeves. You know, like that really that stereotype outfit. Only it's a pantsuit. Oh, Hollywood. More mobi- mobility, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but also and, albino. And she has herself. Yeah, also albino. <laughs> and she has herself the uh, the Sanjay Goon, that mm-hmm. three section nunchuck staff mm-hmm. that turns into a staff and into the nunchucks. There's Very difficult of, weapon. There's but a, a lot of cool things about teacher that's like super badass. Yeah, you're like if you were on the good yeah. side, I'd be really down. Right, like she could be like a solid like you know yeah. superhero, but no. Nah. Yeah, she finds Kai, knocks him out, sucks out his blood with a very large syringe. Mm-hmm. Uh, blood. Yeah, I, I, I see. I just kind of thought it would be one of those like she just shoves it in his tummy and sucks out the uh, stuff because I, I was assuming it'd be like just kind of chilling bacteria not chilling witches. in the stomach. <laughs> we already had needles in the stomach. Uh, it's last month. I'm sorry, but every single comic we've done has had some form of going theme going from the other one. I'm just no, nah, not at all. No, it not. actually might have if we're not careful. <laughs> it might have been entirely unintentional, but there's a lot of. A lot of invasive blood work. Too many, too many syringes. Yeah, yeah. But we finally see Oracle too. Barbara's talking to Operator, and Operator's got some information about uh, what Kai's carrying. It's a drug. An experimental intelligence drug, and th- th- this thing is not approved for human consumption. Um, uh, wh- wh- while it does appear to offer substantial boost in brain power, side effects include hair loss, aggressive and antisocial behavior, and cancer. Cancer. That's the uh, yeah. There's there's a um, drawing uh, of a mouse with a really aggressive tumor. Like uh, most of its body is just a tumor. The the tumor is like this like half the rat. Yeah, it's yeah. it's yeah. real weird. Mm-hmm. Tumor rat. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that tumor rat. That's the that's the next big rebirth. So, so here we go. Young yeah. animal. <laughs> <laughs> Gerard Way's tumor rat. <laughs> I so that's why Doom Patrol's delayed. Yeah, I I'd, I'd, I'd buy that. I'd yeah. buy that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so here we go. Now, now we know why these students are. So desperate to, to get to teachers, she's trying to get this drug. Yeah, it's Uber Adderall. Uberall? Uberall. Adderall, Uberall. We'll, write, we'll no, write that later. I was going right. to say, no, I was, I was say <laughs> Adderall, Uberallis. I was like, I was like that, that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say, Uberall is going to be the, the third part in Kieran Gillen's Uber trilogy. Right. Uber, Uber Invasion, then Uberall. Yeah, where everyone's just jacked up on amphetamines, killing each other. It'd be perfect. I so, read that. So the Blitzkrieg. Yeah, <laughs> the Blitzkrieg Bob. That kind of exactly is what happened. You do like they a, were all on amphetamines killing people. You do a phonogram crossover and call it Blitzkrieg Bop. Oh. <laughs> I like him. I like him. God damn it! There's uh, a special circle of hell just, for uh, just people feeding, make bad puns, and I'm going to be king of that place. Back and forth. I'm surrounded at this I'll, point. I'll see you there. I'll see you there. I look forward to it. <laughs> so, bad girl goes to the hospital to find Kai. Uh, he's been giving a huge dose of antibiotics because. That's what happens when someone sticks you with a syringe in mm. the streets, you know. Mm. Understandable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kai basically was getting this information to a crime boss, and mm. now he's pretty screwed. Mm-hmm. Right. Because, because again, that's what happens whenever you, you know, if you don't have a college education and you need to find your way in life, of course, you go immediately to a high-level organized crime. <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly <laughs> it. Uh, you, have, you have the students and the teacher that mm. are doing some screwed up things mm. because of, you know, their, their lack of education, but... You have Kai as well, mm-hmm. who is actually closer to home for Barbara mm-hmm. and is kind of her analog mm-hmm. for, for the motivation, mm-hmm. you know, which I, I think is nice because it gives those villains a little bit more sympathy. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're able to go, oh, okay, well, no, but I, mm-hmm. I, can, I can see why you'd do this. Right. So, yeah, she's going to go do what she can, track down teacher, try and get this taken care of. She ends up finding teacher and smashes the vial as she's holding it. So she's mm-hmm. brewing up this batch. And spills all over her. Mm-hmm. Red eyes. Well, this isn't good. She becomes one with the serum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Never, never get, never a good thing. No, no, ne- no, ne- no, never. Not th- at all. No, nothing good. <laughs> as far as I'm aware, with TV and other fiction, referred to as a serum. Actually, very few serums are good in fiction. One serum I can think of. Um, super Captain America's Super Serum. 
I get that that but in the long term that didn't work out because well, it turned well, out he's a Nazi. I, I was gonna say the the original <laughs> the ser, ser, the original serum, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but every iteration right. after that has been True. real bad. Yeah, so, eh. it's like it's like oh yeah, it's like well because they had the, the I'm, I, we're not gonna get into Captain yeah, America's that, origin, but the, I, I, see, yeah. I see what you're saying. So, um, teacher's now a genius. Uh, super fast reflex genius. Yeah, well, she was already a great fighter, but now she can just see strategically and tactically right. the situation better. Mm-hmm. So uh, again, Barbara's getting outclassed. I really um, like the uh, I, the the line. Uh, I never knew genius was such a high. Like that's that's that that. that, that. I'm pretty so, sure. So, I'm pretty so sure basically, my, my all the not, kids should stop taking Molly, start taking math. You know, you know, like when you're like really like I'm sorry. vibing on the vibing on the calculus, and you're like, I feel so with it right now. I I was just calculus say, always felt like coming off of a high. For me. <laughs> <laughs> he was always the down. I was, it was never the up. Calculus. Well, calculus was very stressful for me because I my high school calculus teacher like would scream at us randomly. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. I was just gonna say, man, dude, imagine if Stephen Hawking could move. He's high that high all oh, the time. Oh man! Oh good lord! No, I was, I was about to say, I was like, I got a D in calculus mm. with a tutor, mm. and I was amped. Mm. My, my tutor was like, Oh no, I failed you, and I was like, No, 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 no! Just imagine what would have happened if you hadn't have been here. I needed you for this. <laughs> oh man! So yeah, um, maybe not try math. Get high on literature. I don't know. Mm. Anyway. Teacher's enjoying this game. Yeah. So she books it and is making Barbara chase her. And this is where we get a little bit of exposition just to kind of get mm-hmm. teacher's uh, origins. Her parents were chemists. She didn't make it into college. Uh, she, quote unquote, just wants to help people. But Barbara points out that, well, when I broke the vial, you immediately screamed out how much money that was worth. So, no, fuck you. That's not, not what you're out for. <laughs> yeah. you, could, you could try and justify this all you want. You're also out for your money. And um, then her hair starts falling out. Yeah, exactly. Because, well, you know. That was it, that was one of the side effects. It's a side effect. Mm-hmm. And also, you can't have a badass villain look cool unless she's bald completely for some reason. Right. I mean, like, is, is she really even Lex a villain Luther, if she's not a bald albino martial artist? Kingpin. Raised by drug dealers? Yeah, it, it was <laughs> chemists and drug dealers? It's a yeah. tale as old as time. <laughs> but our, Classic. <laughs> I believe that's how Lex Luthor got his Beauty start. And the beast. <laughs> Is a uh, is teacher the beast or is or is Barbara the beast? That is the question. That's a, yeah, that's a deep philosophical. We'll we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll table we'll, that one for yeah. now. <laughs> so, 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 let's get done with the arc and we'll have that discussion for later. Right. Okay. So hair, hair's falling out. Barbara's tracking her down, and then Barbara gets clocked. And the flash knockout mm-hmm. wakes up in hallucination. Davis, it's her and Fruit Bat just kind of talking, drinking tea. Um, uh, then Kai rolls up there with a beer because, you know, that's something that they like to do Kai's together. Kai's a drunk. <laughs> whoa, whoa, listen. I've only watched him drink beers. <laughs> and drink eat sushi. And, and throw it. up. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. There you go. Exactly. Just saying. Um, then it goes to this flashback of them uh, as kids eating a Twixt bar. Cute. Yeah, he spelled it right. Twixt. Yeah, it's, Twixt. It's Non-copyright infringement. Um, uh, Be Twixt. So, <laughs> I mean, then the, there's this whole theme of... You need to get rid of your past in order to, you know, have the future. So she kind of looks back at this old memory of them. She's got the little pigtails and they're talking and she realizes, no, she has to forget about Kai and, you know, well, overall, forget about Kai. Mm -hmm. He's a shit person. He's not really helping her out in right now. And as wonderful as this vacation and escape from Burnside was, she doesn't need people like that in her life. And she also has to, in order to think as quick as she can, get rid of her what memory? I did it. I did it. There, I, I that wasn't me prompting you. That was me. I just didn't know what it was called or pronounced it. Yes. I did it. Yes. I did it. That's mm-hmm. like uh, photographic, photographic memory. memory. Yeah, the, yeah. Quote yeah, unquote, okay. as TV calls it, the photographic mm-hmm. memory. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Kai is that great uh, analogy mm-hmm. for that photographic memory of just like, look, you. Do you need to know how many leaves are on that plant in the corner? Because you do. Mm-hmm. And it's really messing with your brain power. You, right. You're, you're, you're really mm-hmm. putting a lot of, you know, reserve energy into yeah. that. You could be so much more fluid and in the moment if you just shut that off for a minute. Right. She's not like overclocking her detail. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like brain she, all the she, time. she can she can really flow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and that, that's a common theme in a lot of martial arts is just not thinking. Right. Is, is allowing your body to, to use its muscle memory mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. go with the flow of things and... 
Kai goes ahead and puts uh, what is it? It's, it's like a string around it's a little her red, wrist. little red string. Yeah, oh. Bas- basically tell her to to remember. You know, mm-hmm. at, when, mm-hmm. when it's time, uh, and then she immediately gets pushed out of the the cafe, which is floating in an abyss because that's how at, I guess at the real space. I mean, knockout <laughs> dreams. Right. I mean, right. I, I've been knocked unconscious and I didn't have any experience like this. I think I saw stars. But yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that was that was a weird case though because I got hit on the head with like a steel beam. Oh. Oh. Long story. Ah, it's so like your hard hat. Don't don't <laughs> don't be a camp counselor at an art camp where they have movable statues. Oh, good. Okay. All right. okay, fair, fair. Yeah, lesson learned. My twenties, my early twenties were great. <laughs> <laughs> From what you remember. <laughs> so, uh, now it's time. Mm-hmm. Teachers running away, completely bald, minus like a couple of like Homer Simpson strands of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look and it. it uh, I don't know if anybody's seen that meme going around right now. It looks like you dropped a lollipop on the carpet and then picked it back up. Raindrop, drop, top, lollipop. <laughs> so she goes and chases after. And here we have our two-page fight scene. Just just going at it. Two pages. There's there's, there's weapons. There's a little talk. And bra 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 Okay. And then finally, knocked her out. Unconscious. Just Teacher's down. Yep. Barbara wins mm. without the eidetic memory. She's allowed to float the moment. Mm. And, and and the last thing she does, she mm-hmm. ties her wrist together. Yeah, with a little bit of cord. Mm-hmm. Which, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. All the memories are back. Cord around wrist, mm-hmm. string around wrist, mm-hmm. boom, click, and just dumps all the data mm-hmm. that she was background storing but not focusing on right into her head. And she realizes what she has to do. Open up a school for children. Sorry. Again, working on my dramatic pauses. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, she goes and she delivers She delivers the uh, the teacher to the crime boss. Says, basically, look, Kai's not the one responsible. She messed this up. Mm-hmm. And then leaves and 30 seconds later, the cops show up. Mm-hmm. So crime boss arrested, teacher arrested, everybody's busted, which... Why don't they do that more often? <laughs> like I was, I was reading that, and I like, was turn like, in, turn, "Turn them into the cops." Yeah, mm-hmm. well, but not not like that. But like, mm-hmm. like you always see these villains getting away because the superheroes not interacting with the police properly. Because mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, you can't always. But mm-hmm. okay, even if you don't have anything else in this crime boss, mm-hmm. right now you have unlawful imprisonment mm-hmm. at the very least. Mm-hmm. Right, you have unlawful imprisonment. Yeah, it's it's, it's like what they did with um. Uh, and I'm sure there's something else in the house they're gonna find oh, when they definitely. yeah when they yeah. go look. Mm-hmm. It's like what they did with uh, Al Capone. It's like, oh no, we can't get him for any of this stuff, but tax evasion. evasion. Yeah, exactly. And then you give him yeah. syphilis in prison. But <laughs> oh no, he had syphilis way before prison, dude. Yeah, probably because mm-hmm. because of having sex with filthy women. Are we sure? Putting putting the bow on the end of all of this. Putting a bow on the end of all this. Batgirl gets hard hat, schoolgirl, and the moth, in which I don't know how she's communicating with the moth, but not asking questions. I'm they, sure the moth can read. Jesus. Uh, does Batgirl know Chinese? Yes. Batgirl knows multiple languages. She's been speaking them throughout the issue. Whoa. Yeah, because whenever they did a little... Yeah, I've, yeah. I've just seen her speaking Chinese or Japanese this whole time. My bad. No, anyway. She also... No, whenever she speaks right. in red, in whatever native country she's in, she's speaking in their language. And like the, usually when she switches language, so like, there'll be a little <laughs> like set of symbols on the bubble to be like, okay, she's speaking this language. As, you know? as, as we told Richard you know, earlier, this actually has I a really have, good. This has a really I'm good biblical my reference to it. fifth page of notes. Mm. Uh, Davis finished the comic Friday. <laughs> Um, no, I, I, I like your guys' dynamic, though. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. it's it's really interesting because whenever she speaks in reds, everyone understands her. Mm-hmm. Just like in the Bible, the red words are Jesus's words, and those are the only ones you should understand. Are there red words in the Bible? Yeah, some Bible. One, one of the King some, James versions. Some Bibles, all the words that Jesus says are in red, and those are the ones you got to read. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> it's not blood, though. Not blood. But so. Oh, okay. All, oh, okay. That's um. It's so not like all three of them. Jesus' blood words. Yeah. <laughs> or wine. So all three of them, they, they apparently get a message, and they go and they find, because now they found a new teacher who is not teacher. Their new teacher, Fruit Bat. Yeah! Finally give them something. Some yeah. kind of constructive leadership mm-hmm. at this point. 104-year-old lady teach them how to be, you know, What's, better at school or superheroes. I don't yeah. know. It's kind of it's kind of a good moment, too, because their whole worry was that since they can get this college education, they would be able to do 
what they were expected to do with their lives. And I was like, well, you're actually, you're like super insanely good martial artist. Yeah, mm-hmm. why aren't what? you using that? And you already have like thematic secret identities. You might as well just become superheroes. Yeah. Just, See, just, it's like, that's what ever does what DC Universe it. does. Just own it. Yeah. See, I, I would really like for them to get like, oh, you're from Singapore. Oh, you're from Seoul. You're from a lot. All right, cool. Now y'all can just be the four tigers. <laughs> Which are is the you know, they describe those four four mm. rising economics mm. areas over in Southeast Asia. I'd read that. That'd be wonderful. Didn't, didn't DC yeah, have, the, um, did, did the... DC have that that like all Chinese Justice League for a while? And they had like <laughs> they had, like his most glorious doctor was like one of their names. Like, they had yeah. all these great like kung fu movie names. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, they had the Great Ten. Yes, that's, that's and what I'm thinking. And then they have the Justice League of China, but they're new. Yeah, no. That, the Justice League of China is a weird case, well, though, because right they're isn't all isn't knockoffs. More like, it's more like the Trinity of yeah. China, pretty much. Yeah, there's, they, like, there's well, like their Batman, their Superman, and their Wonder Woman. They I just added a Flash. Okay, okay. Yeah, so there's a... And ba- the ba- the Chinese Batman's sister is trying to, like, campaign to be um, the Robin of China, but it's not working out. Yeah, no, they're not. Yeah. <laughs> See, I really, I really just want to have someone who's Korean and he talks to the dead so he can be Soul Man. <laughs> well, my... my God. My favorite borderline offensive um, Asian superhero team, which is a really bad way to introduce that, mm-hmm. is um, <laughs> the the I, I forget what, uh, Super Young team from uh, Final Crisis. What most excellent Super Bat? Oh. Like these teen Japanese superheroes, they're just like I, 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 combi- I, I, like, I haven't, like I haven't read Final Crisis, but I know a little bit about it. Right. The most vague understanding. Right. So their leader is most excellent. For, for example, their, mo- their is a most excellent Super Bat. And his power is literally that he's super fucking rich. <laughs> like that's all. <laughs> so he's well, Batman. Yeah. Well, it's weird because it's like there's that, but then like he also has like this weird like holographic power armor he can like bring up. All right. Of course. And okay. then like there's a little like <laughs> mini series after Final Crisis where he's straight up like, oh yeah, I just bought Japan. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> wow. Okay. 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 Someone. Okay. Like someone had edit- whoever like made the editorial mistake with the Indonesian politics and X Men made probably made the same mistake with. Super most excellent young Super. bat <laughs> buying Japan. Uh, so yeah, teacher has new student. Well, not teacher. Uh, the group students has now have students. a new teacher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Barbara stops mm-hmm. by the hospital, puts a little bow on the Kai situation. Mm-hmm. She finally gets a breather. Mm-hmm. Nope, gets a call. Got to go back to Burnside. Mm-hmm. Boom, back in action. Mm-hmm. That's where she's happiest anyway. Uh, issue six is a nice little one-off mm-hmm. of Barbara on the plane. Mm-hmm. And Poison Ivy has snuck on this prehistoric plant, which basically starts destroying the plane. And Poison Ivy and Barbara kind of have to come to an understanding right. to, to basically save the plane. It, it's a really fun little play back and forth. I don't want to dive into it too I, much. Yeah. Le- leave a little bit of, you know, something for the reader to I really like it as, like, a it. little one-off. It's almost, it's kind of like a throwback almost. Like, yeah. it was all, like, you now Bruce Wayne's well, well, on plane. He has to save it as Batman, though. Rebirth has had a lot of these fun little ones. Mm-hmm. These fun little ones. Like, I don't, like, I haven't read any of the Superman issues I've read a couple that I didn't enjoy any of them, mm-hmm. except for the one where him and Swamp Thing mm-hmm. are dealing with Superman's powers. Oh. Like I, re- I really liked that issue. It was fun to see those two characters interact. I mm-hmm. love those kind of little crossovers. Right. Well, that and I, I, I don't read much DC. I can't really lie about that. But I did like at the end of this one, leading into the next arc they're going to have, I assume. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. In- introduces uh, look, some guy whose name is E. Cobblepot. Yeah. Ethan, right? Yeah, yeah, Ethan, the, the, son he, of, the son of yeah, the penguin. He's Penguin's estranged son, mm-hmm. who's also a tech guy. Whoa, 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 whoa! You mean someone? Right, yeah. With the penguin? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. All right. Somebody did. Cool. So now he's like skinny That's millennial hipster penguin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So it's yeah. The book's done. <laughs> let's let, 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 let's talk about some of these these themes. Um, like like we touched on a little bit earlier was that developing. It's been a you know Western ideal for a while, but developing in the whole yeah. of, of globalism, how important higher education becomes, right? Well, and more just to, to a certain extent, how, what are you willing to do to really secure your future? See, I I, I I took with that, but I also took that as the, I mean, when it comes down to it, yes, with with a degree, you're getting uh, you're getting experience, you're getting knowledge in something, mm-hmm. but what it comes down to is really just like that one test. Everything is dependent upon this one sheet of paper you have that says you did this. Yeah. Same thing with the test they're trying to take. They even said, oh, it doesn't matter what they do in school. It's as if your entire college, you getting into college is based on your SAT scores. That's Mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. No, no. Like you could really just screw off all year round the entire four years. But as long as you got a perfect on your SAT, you can get into whatever college you want. Right. 
what's me? I like think about it in reference to just the region that we're currently in. The uh, you know South ACTs, Louisiana, bro. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say, think about the people you know. Like, either you have these college graduates with their white collar jobs, mm-hmm. you have oil field workers, mm-hmm. you have people in the hospitality industry. That's pretty much it. But there's not in, in South Louisiana. There's not a lot of nuance to the job market. No, you know, e- either you are in a job that requires a college degree just to even get an interview, mm-hmm. or you're doing one of very few, you know, not necessarily labor intensive but physically intensive jobs. Being being well, a trade waiter, basic. trade based, yeah, jobs. yeah, mm-hmm. and, yeah. And and it, it's it's just there's not a lot of room, mm-hmm. you know. And I'd imagine that's even worse in in Asia where they're still dealing with the older traditional society and now moving into the modern day with the globalism and how rapidly they're building and, and, and well that and, and what, what's happening over there in that aspect that and the well they're still dealing with extreme poverty at a large scale exactly. in a lot of yeah. these countries in which uh we're very I, I i'm just gonna say we're very fortunate that we do not have that large scale of poverty in which Oh, yeah, hold on. I'm going to go walk to my building where, oh, yeah, we're a brand new tech firm. We're starting up. We make an app that does this. But, hey, I have to go walk through five miles of the slums of people built with houses made out of rebar and newspaper they slap together for me to get to my job. Like, we we don't have that level. And with the, with as you said, with the Asian sphere getting to that level where they're, you know, starting to am- uh, Americanize, yeah, not globalize, and, and just just because how quickly it's such a, it's that big dichotomy, mm-hmm. right? You know, between the, the the have and the have not, almost for lack right. of a better, I hate using those political buzzwords. All right, comrade, you know, but <laughs> but there, there is like like either you are you know stuck in your tiny little village, or you manage to make it mm-hmm. to a university, and through university you can actually get to a big city with a well paying job and all that. Yeah, you know, like I said, I was willing to take a fifty grand. To go to college, if it, I was in worse, you know, situations, I might mask up and punch some people. Right. Well, Mike, I like to punch people for fun. Mike, you, <laughs> when, when you, I was fighting, like that was, <laughs> when, when, when I was training in martial right. arts, it was fun. Mm-hmm. So you know, adding a mask is not all that. Di- I mean, it makes it a little bit more illegal and I mean, weird. That, that's how but, that's how superhero comics basically work. Yeah, it really is. It's yeah. most people that like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I'm pretty good at fighting stuff. Let's put on a mask and do it for good. I guess. Like, isn't isn't that literally the beginning of Spider Man? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. What it is. <laughs> oh, we, we all know, we all we all know how that worked out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he puts on a mask and uses his newfound powers to make some money wrestling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. And then and the, then we have a then we have a series of flavorful rice dishes. Mm-hmm. What oh, Uncle Ben? Yeah. Oh God! <laughs> really? Oh, no dude. one? Okay, whatever. Fine. It's, it's, I, right. I also liked um, like Barbara as a character. Mm-hmm. It's a really cool portrayal of like a Type A personality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now you get a lot of superheroes that are very controlling in the moment, but with how analytical her mind is, um, if you've ever been in a situation where you're trying to control the details through what you can perceive and 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 you know this is kind of hyper control, you can really relate on that on that kind of level. Right. Because there's these fun little moments where she's with Kai and she's doing this awkward flirting. Mm-hmm. And like anybody with that, you know, even even some type A tendencies can really recognize that in their own romantic past. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, this is really familiar to that time. I embarrassed the crap out of myself. <laughs> right. Which is, it's a lot of fun to see that interaction. Like in Dirty Dancing, when she's like, I brought a watermelon. I hadn't seen Dirty Dancing in a long time. I don't remember this scene. Oh. I, actually, I actually just watched Dirty Dancing, but I was like, you also don't remember the watermelon. Well, I was drunk for most of it, and I think I fell asleep before the end. Well, but well, yeah, she, she like she like brings a watermelon. She's like, I brought a watermelon. She's like, it's like oh, I can't believe I said I just I brought the watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. um, lightness. I like the lightness of the story. Mm-hmm. Like, there, there's a lot of comics that I'm reading that are very heavy. I mean, mm-hmm. she didn't get paralyzed in this one, and, so it's always a fun fact. Well, right. I'm, I'm, I'm saying he- heavy is usually what I lean towards. I, I usually lean towards heavier stuff, and I usually lean towards very, um, like, lore-heavy things. Right. You know, um, but it's it's nice to every once in a while read something that's, it's not a world-ending event. Like, yeah. like the villain situation is not that terrible. It's, it's not great, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but... It's a problem that has to be dealt with, but if it's not dealt with, it's not like the earth is going to blow up. No, we'll just have a lot of just really 
jacked up kids trying to get into college right. in Southeast Asia. It's like a very specific problem that mm-hmm. they deal with over the course of one arc, and mostly used as a way to like kind of like develop Barbara as a character. Yeah, because like exactly. the idea, the idea of memory is like a big part, but the bigger part is that she's able to finally realize she needs to shut it off sometimes to like mm-hmm. be a better Batgirl, which is interesting because like the whole previous run, um, the burn of the original Burnside run. Like, they reference her eidetic memory all the time. Like, it came up, like, every, like, I think every issue. Yeah. yeah. So, well, well I, I guess that would be, you know, yeah. kind of, I guess, very important yeah. is then if that's the case, yeah. is this is them setting up, hey, yeah, it's a thing, but we're not going to rely on it so heavy. Right. It's not going to be a crutch like it was in older yeah. arcs. It's very much like taking her out of, like, this, before, like, a new context, but now it's the old context and putting her in this completely different situation and seeing, like, what she does there and... You know what she does, like, okay, so this is like what makes Batgirl Batgirl. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's it's a comic story. Mm-hmm. Like it, it it's it's not somebody trying to dramatically reimagine something. It's not someone trying to make this big grandiose uh, going on with the lightness point. There's kind of a goofy villain. There's a there's multiple goofy there's villains. There's like all of those are <laughs> incredibly <laughs> goofy. They, they, they're, they're all goofy. Yeah. The plan doesn't quite make sense. You're like, okay, I kind of get it, but I feel like there's a better way to go about doing this. I really love the giant leap of like, oh yeah, probiotics. Oh, he has bacteria that has information in his stomach. Of which, course. Which is which is funny because that's like a very classic like 60s Batman TV show move. It's like, <laughs> but, like so, exactly. somebody makes some weird comment. Well, it, it, it's it's what I, what I call the... Um, like like uh, the, the the situational dramedy, mm-hmm. like, right? There's al- there's always that character that like like every episode of Scrubs, there was this one character that comes into the hospital who says one sentence that sparks somebody else to go, "That's how I have to fix my life right now," mm-hmm. you know? And it like never happens yeah. that way in real life ever. But it, it's 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 that that classic kind of literary device that's used. The story kind of gets better for everybody except for like the worst of the worst. Right. You know, at the end she not only defeats the problem but gets these lost souls a new teacher right, right. so so it's it's yeah she gets to be a hero hero the know, only not just person... beating people up she actually gets to help and and improve lives mm-hmm. you know and again it's not as heavy as most of the other books we've covered so far so it's kind of nice to have that little bit of lightness and that brightness and that classic comic story which is a great way to start a rebirth right you know comic book with going back to its roots it's a very classic feel with some modern takes to it, which is real nice. The only person that gets screwed over is this one person that's trying to upload their term paper whenever she's using up all the bandwidth at the coffee shop. Oh, right. There was two. There was, was two. Well, was one of them, she just said, oh, no, my network went out. Which oh, okay. She could have been she could have been kazaing a song or whatever. <laughs> yes. But, yes. That's exactly what they're doing in 2017. But in China. Were they in China or Singapore? They were in China. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was China at the time. Okay. So, but it was but like, Japan? oh, no, my. They jump around a no, lot. No, no, they were in Japan was, at that point. Okay. Because teachers in Japan. Mm-hmm. But she, why oh, is she okay. dressed in the kipei then? Which is a traditional Chinese outfit. Wait, no. They, she starts in Japan, right? Okay, yeah. She starts in Japan and goes to China. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then, then, oh, never mind. Never She's mind. like in a different country. Like we're better. Issue. We're better. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it gets real confusing. Let's talk about the art for a second. Mm-hmm. Love it. Because, again, uh, like with mm-hmm. witches, the art really tells a lot of this story. Yeah. I'm learning that I really love for, I don't I don't know how else to call it. Maybe you have an actual real industry term, sketchy line work. Like, there's not a hard-defined, bold line. Right. Like, the, you can see some of the pencil stroke to it, and it gives the characters some motion. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it makes them kind of, it makes them feel kinetic. Right. Whereas where a lot of that really hard, bold, straight, you know, solid, clean-edged line work feels almost stationary. Right. I don't, yeah, it's like, I don't know if there's a real term for there's it. Probably, there's probably like an art world term, like a <laughs> art theory term for it. Um, mm-hmm. I just generally kind of like it for, it's like a looser, kind of like you were saying, like sort of kinetic it's, style. It's like a sketch. Yeah. It, it feels more like the sketch. Yeah. It's not like a polished. Right. You know, it, but not in a bad way. It really well, gives motion. It kind of like fits the theme of the story too, because if you notice like his figures and like how he moves them through space, those are always kind of drawn very well. But like, in a lot of cases, he'll like do a background in one panel, and then just like no backgrounds for like the next <laughs> three pages. Yeah. So it's like it's kind of like a thing like the detail s- sort of falls away, so Albuquerque can focus on like the motion and like mm-hmm. the action, which is where you get in the fight. And the fight scenes especially are really great in this one. Oh, yeah. Also, like um, I think they mentioned this when we were talking about the first issue. Like when he does little diagrams to show like what Barbara's thing, like how objects are moving through space. Mm-hmm. Like okay, so schoolgirl's gonna hit this, this, and this. So if I hit this one, I can hurt. Yeah, her. it's like a very, like, it's like a very. Yeah. 
analytically like a textbook yeah. diagram it almost looks like it's a lot like um what like david aya was doing with um hawkeye mm-hmm. oh like, yeah yeah, yeah. The, the like whole little like you know it's like boop, 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 like the dotted line to show his eye you know where yeah. it's going so you get that so you get like a setup panel diagram panel reaction panel yeah which is like a good it's a good flow but talking about the the background work mm-hmm. which i really liked is just a lot of it is just a color Right. The, the background is just a color mm. to really give focus to the characters. Yeah. Um, but also the the backgrounds are never just, oh, well, it's white mm. or, oh, well, it's it's dark because it's nighttime. It's like, it's like this bright orange and then there's a mm. purple and then there's mm-hmm. like a teal. It The colors are very bright, which helps it, keep it lighter. Yeah, it's very it's very poppy. Yes. There's a lot of uh, – like, even like the cover to like the trade, it's like this pink background. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and then there's the a lot – the girl font. Yeah, the back girl font's really thought. cool. Yeah. But there, there's also a lot of, like, those 60s kind of bam, pow, biff moments mm-hmm. where, like, something happens, there's the big word in the background to denote whatever the sound is, mm-hmm. it's color, and that's it. There's not a lot of detail, there's not a lot of anything else going on. I like that great um, KO panel. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so simple, but it really drives home the point, whereas... You could have drawn the entire ring in the background with fans cheering, mm-hmm. even in not a lot of detail, mm-hmm. and it wouldn't have hit the same way. Right. Davis, do you have anything you want to add on the uh, the art style? Anything that really jumps out to you that maybe I'm missing? Yes. Is that a dramatic pause? Yes. <laughs> it's uh, very poppy, very bright. I really did enjoy, I love the fact that the background has, I don't know what it's technically called, but it's where like, it has like, it has the balls in the background. That, that gridded dot. Yeah. The, oh, the, yeah. The, the dots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the gridded dot. The dot like, work like, in the, the background. It, it, like, it, it, reminiscent of the old dot matrix printer kind well, of situation. Yeah. Like, well, like when you used to put color into comics, there was that dot matrix use. There, right. there, there is a term for that. I forget what it is though. Yeah. But it's, it's I, just I the, 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 the dots in the background and like some of them, they kind of help fade. So it kind of acts as its own form of shading to go with some yeah. of these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but again, very bright. Uh, and uh, I like the, there's, the backgrounds aren't distracting. They're like they have a couple of beautiful cityscape scenes where you, know, you have to see the background. But everything is to the forefront. So yeah. they want you to focus on like this is this is they're jumping all over the place. And yes, like, you know, Japan has characteristics of the buildings and Ch- Beijing has their own different buildings and Seoul. Mm-hmm. But the background, as far as it being Southeast Asia, is just yeah. Southeast Asia. It's yeah. not so much about the background, because, yeah, that is changing around, but the characters themselves are what we should be focusing on in this, which yeah. is why they, why we have someone no, named Hardhat. I do appreciate <laughs> that, like, every issue day takes at least, like, a little bit, like a page or so to like establish, like, okay, this is a different country, this is a different mm-hmm. yeah. culture. Like, the little, like... It's not just like, oh, yeah, we're in... Another Asia country. Yeah. Or like it, there's like, a little yeah. bit of something to kind of ground it. Or like a little like not even narration box, like little text boxes. Like okay, okay, so this food is called this thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's yeah. L- little, little they, details they little to notes. little yeah, details it, to differentiate yeah. that. Yes, we recognize we're in different regions of the yeah. world and they're not all the same. Yeah. It's like just enough detail to not overwhelm, but to still like establish. Okay, we're in this place. Yeah. Like yeah. So uh, with nothing else to add, let's jump to the rating section. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm gonna go first. Well, do you want to tell them how we rate things over here? Oh, so. I am. Um, well, I, 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 I told I told it in text, but everybody knows uh, we do a, a buy, borrow, pass system, and then we kind of explain why we picked that. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, this one is uh, a borrow, but with an asterisk, like a baseball player taking steroids. Okay, and I'll explain <laughs> why. All right, I'll explain why. <laughs> Could lead to that. Yeah. Uh, so so. <laughs> the the cons of this one for me is it's it's a lot of fun, but it's not an essential story. Mm-hmm. Like it's not as far as I'm aware, maybe in ten years it'll change or whatever. It doesn't seem to be a huge earth shattering, groundbreaking, status quo changing story of the DC universe. Uh it, it, I don't really need it in my collection. Right. I, I had a lot of fun reading it. Uh the prose, extremely relatable, a fun character, uh fun, light story but still has some real stakes to it. There's beautiful artwork. My asterisk is borrow the issue. And if you like it, consider going monthly. Okay. I think that's a better way to read th- this character. This this particular run, it, while it's it's fine in a trade version, I'd much rather just get the trade of the library. Like I'm not going to if there's a trade I need in my, you know, shelf, I'm not 
skipping past that to go here. But I'm really excited for this Ethan Cobblepot arc to end because I think I'm going to jump on after that and try it on a monthly basis because this is a fun monthly book and no matter what your pull list looks like, it can add a little bit of lightness and fun to whatever you are currently reading on a regular basis. So I say borrow this book, get a feel for it, and if you like it, consider throwing it into your pull list. I would say I'd give this one a buy. Mm-hmm. Personally, I think it's for, uh, a lot of it's the art. Like I'm a huge Albuquerque f- fan, and you could say like it's it's not essential because it's not gonna like it's probably not gonna have any effect on a story like ten years from now unless mm-hmm. someone's like a huge Hope Larson fan. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, man, I, want, I really want to. I really want to. I want to know what in, all those. Like, in five kids. years, Greg Capullo writes a DC spanning story. Starring the teacher, like <laughs> oh no, he's doing that this summer. Yeah, that's not the teacher. Teacher, but he's doing yeah. a big DC. Yeah. Anyway, T- teacher's gonna yeah. show up in Dark Knight's Metal or something. I almost like that you can just kind of like pick it up as like an indie unto itself because, like, while well, I kept referencing like the like original Burnside run, you don't really need to know a ton yeah. of that to mm-hmm. get what's going on. But yeah, because yeah, I I didn't know any yeah, of that. Y- Same. Yeah, you guys didn't. Yeah, but yeah, it, it really tells you where you need to be from the beginning to yeah. the end. It's a self-contained story, yeah. so that that is really cool. You right. have a good point there. It's like if you're if you're the kind of person, uh, I guess it's more. I'd say it's a buy for people who are like kind of just getting into comics and feel like they'd like Batgirl. You can like grab this story. It's not like a huge commitment. You just like read it and like you like that. You can like go backwards, go forwards, whatever yeah. you want to do. It's definitely a good introduction because yeah. like you don't want to. Here you go. It's the first thing you ever read. Here's Civil War. Yeah. You know, while yeah, it's a great, right. it's a great story. It's real hard, you know, to I, jump or like or like. Here's Crisis on Infinite Earths. I have like, a, I have a lot of problems with Civil War, but I don't think we have time to get into no. it. <laughs> oh, we'll, 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 we'll do it one day. One okay. day. But no, that, that, if you guys ever do a Civil War episode, no, we'll bring you back. Invite me back. That was the f- I, I have words to have with that comic. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Civil War one. That was the first one we were like, oh yeah, we could. T- we both own a copy of it. We could totally do it. And yeah, it's going to be. Fun. Well, I mean, a, a, as Davis and actually, has, and actually, Civil War was. I, I bought the Civil War trade and that got me back into comic books back in 2007 so yeah it was, it was a rough it was a rough start it was a rough go from <laughs> after that i'm like wait thor's a robot what i think i really got back in the, let's see Hellboy let's and let's girl. oh sorry yeah no i'm just saying let, yeah. let, let's save this we could do a little supplemental maybe mm-hmm. you know uh in between weeks right. little short interview thing so so i would say okay so my rating on this one is going to be again with a caveat i would say a buy for new readers who want to like or like big batgirl fans mm-hmm. um a borrow for people who are just like into superhero comics just want to read like a good like kinda, a good fun story a good, like it's a good adventure story yeah like mm-hmm. yeah okay i i'm i'm just gonna mimic what y'all said yeah bye like <laughs> i um uh as soon as i started reading this i i, I really liked it i mean it's bright it's poppy it's covering all those lines where it's like oh yeah it's it's there are stakes but they're not dire Mm -hmm. it's fun it looks great it's entertaining and yeah problem most likely after the cobble pot trade comes out i'm gonna get that (laughs) and then probably pick up monthly after that just reading this comic because my my i'm I'm low on dc right now Mm -hmm. well i was gonna say my my caveat i was just thinking about this because i read something c2e2 over the weekend yeah I might not pick this up, but Poison Ivy and Catwoman are supposed to join Birds of Prey mm-hmm. soon, and I love those two characters, and they get very underserved, so I might pick up Birds of Prey, which is still a Batgirl story, right. just not this one. But actually, between me and Davis, then we might have both Batgirls yeah. in our pull list. So. Right. So, cool. and, which, again, and this is something I would never have picked up, if unless we were... unless Honestly, me neither. Yeah. When you said yeah. that... When I was at the comic shop that day, and you were like, "We could do this, this, or this," and I was like, "Okay, well, we're a little heavy on Marvel and Image right now. DC's the low one. We need another one for that. So why not? Because the whole mm-hmm. point of the show is we're not yeah. just trying to review things we already know we like. You know, some some of the stuff yeah. I have already read or Davis has already read, mm-hmm. and we kind of yeah. get turn each other on to it. But the whole was, point is to try new things, yeah. like with our drinking issues stuff. I was kind of glad you guys ended up going with this one because this was like the background suggestion was actually kind of the one I thought was going to be." Like the long shot, yeah. Because <laughs> I feel like Karnak's really dark. Yeah, Karnak's yeah. like true detective dark, uh-huh. and like loaded with like weird like philosophical arguments that only kind of make sense. But well, it's, um, well, it's a war analysis, think, right? So, well, yeah. well that, that's honestly why I picked it because I was like, okay, I could. D- Davis has read a couple Karnak issues. He's really into Inhumans, so either it's going to he's either going to already be preconceived to like it, or it's gonna it's gonna be so bad that he's gonna be like, oh, I hate this, and I love Inhuman. Yeah. You know, I am into that kind of darker, heavier right. stuff. 
and the the image one looked really cool and weird. But yeah, like Davis said, I would never pick this up just off the shelves. Right. Like I have a couple in my pull list. I'm, I'm reading Nightwing and Batman and Wonder Woman and, and a couple others. But I never even thought to pick yeah. up Batgirl. Like I I, yeah. I picked up Batwoman and I'm interested in that character because it's a darker take on a female Batman. Right. Batgirl's not quite as dark, but I ended up really liking that about it. Well, it's interesting because I actually kind of just picked this one up on a whim in the first place because I thought, okay. Well, again, and actually, um, it goes, again, it goes back kind of the colors. Like it had like the it, first covers, like yeah, a lot the, of yellow. The covers, the covers really yeah. pop and they really catch yeah. your attention. So you, like, okay, if you're just cool. looking at a wall, it's going to jump out at you. Right, yeah. So it's something a good like thing that's out of like definitely my usual wheelhouse. But yeah. Um, yeah. So there we go. We two buys and a borrow with a caveat of consider to put it in your pull list. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a successful book in my. I, I'd say so. Uh, book. Yeah, I agree. I don't know this, this, say this, that. Is, this is a. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. I kind of painted myself into a corner with that colloquialism. And also for being the first time we've had a guest on in a minute, it's good that we're you know branching out and trying new things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, nothing else to add. Thank you, everybody, for listening. You know where to find us, jacksoftradespodcast.com. We are facebook.com slash jackstradespod, at jackstradespod on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, We are on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. Go listen, go review, leave us star ratings, please five, maybe. (laughs) You know, just... If, if you're right. feeling so inclined, um, share it. Make, you know, your mom. No, don't make your mom listen to it. There's a lot of potty words. Um, <laughs> make make somebody, make a nerd listen to it that may not be into comics because this, you know, they might like it. Uh, do whatever you can to share it. It means a lot to us. It really helps us out. And do whatever you want because this is America. Yeah. Uh, as always, uh, we've been here with In-Depth Media. Um, thank you, Richard, for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. With nothing else, I'm Mike. I'm Davis. Have a good one. Adios. Once again, you've been listening to Jacks of Trades with your host, Mike and Davis, with special guest Richard from Crescent City Comics. Thank you, as always, for listening. This was recorded by Greg Tilton in the In-Depth Media Studios and edited by Daniel Desimone. Uh, give me the TLDR. Yeah, give me the short version. TLDR. Uh-huh. Um, last time we recorded, my roommate called the cops because his baby, no, I'm not going to use that term. The mother of his child's sister, quote unquote, stole his dog. (laughs) Now he left it over at her place for a month. Uh And then she, so she got it chipped and tagged in her name and whatnot. Yeah. I'm, because this is getting recorded and this could theoretically go out in public. No, I'm not going to continue to delve into the details of this story, but all I'm saying is this. This is the first time whenever he could tell his kid, no, 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 the dog went out to a nice farm and is hanging out with other dogs, where it's actually true. <laughs> it is. Hey. <laughs> so That's it's a little a- it's having a good time. Mm-hmm.